I was a hard-working player, the team player. Luca was a leader, a winner. He was so appreciated in Italy. Gianluca Vialli was the one that really stood out, just outstanding. You look at the opponents in the eyes and you feel like I'm better than you. Never see that attitude. A real handful. He have everything. Quality, movements, power, work ethic. All the efforts that I put into the game, I was paid back. It was fantastic. In Italy, when you play the match, if it doesn't go well, you might be in trouble. <laughs> we feel so much pressure when we play that when we go on the pitch, we've already played two or three matches in our minds. This is the culture. When things don't go well, it's easy to go on the people that they stand out. The pinup boy of Italian football, Gianluca Viale. Luca, he was one of them. I was considered well, the main reason why we didn't win the World Cup. You are a traitor, you betrayed your country. It's how you recover from the downs that makes you what you are. I grew up in Cremona, a relatively small town, not far from Milan. My family was probably in between middle class and upper class. My parents tried to brought us up in a certain old-fashioned manner. I was the fifth of five children, so maybe being the fifth of five is what pushes you to actually, you know, you want to be seen and noticed and you want to get the food from the table before it's over. When I was probably age three, I kicked the ball for the first time and I fell in love and I realized what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I started playing with my friends in a big courtyard, and then I would play with my brother back in my bedroom, and I spent every single day of my life, whenever I was around the football, thinking how I can get better. Age 16, I played for Cremonese, and it all started there. The young Viali spent four happy seasons with his hometown club in the early 1980s, his goals helping Cremonese climb the Italian leagues. Third year of Italian football was just perfect because it meant I could get a game more easily than if I'd been at a club like Juventus or Inter Milan in the youth team. And then Cremonese got promoted to the second tier, and then we got promoted to Serie A. My name became popular amongst the bigger teams in the Serie A. I then moved to Sampdoria. I think I was ready. Viali left for Genoa in 1984 to join teammates, some of whom had already scaled the heights elsewhere. He was only a baby when, I, when I'm there at 31. He must have been 20. Wanted to know everything about, you know, what was the secret of success. He was destined to be a star. When uh, I signed for Sampdoria and I spoke to the chairman, Mr. Paolo Mantovani, he wanted to prove that even a smaller club like Sampdoria, with the right planning, with the right players, could actually end up winning the Italian championship. Obviously, you felt like, I want to be part of this. What was created was a team, a family, a team that shared the same objective, to entertain, to be loyal to the colours, and if possible, to win. The atmosphere was just idea, fantastic. I think that was the secret and the key of our success. We were Sampdoria fans. 
We were just a team from Liguria. That wasn't supposed to cause too many problems. It was a fantastic uh, first season. We ended up coming fourth. We qualified for Europe through winning the Italian Cup. It felt like we were in, you know, on track to get to where we wanted to go. Having never won any silverware at all before 1985, Sampdoria lifted the Coppa Italia three times in five seasons. It was a club on a rapid ascent, driven by the flourishing partnership of the Gold Twins, striker Viali and number 10, Roberto Mancini. We had met before in the national team under 17. I became good friend with Roberto. They were two young men that were destined to be stars, but were quite different. He had Mancini, who was more sullen, who took a lot for him to smile. The maestro, the one who had come up with a bit of magic to open a door. Then you had Viali from the first minute to the last minute working his socks off. Both extremely effective. On the football pitch, we understood each other so well and uh, I was more scoring the goals, it was more providing the assists, but we could actually swap positions. I was able to drop a bit deeper and become like a number 10, and he could be the centre forward. So with that, I think we confused a lot of uh, the um, opponents. By the late 80s, Viali had emerged as Sampdoria's regular leading scorer and held Italian football in his thrall, not only for his eye for goal, but also for his distinctive look. I have huge calves, and uh, and so so I didn't want to wear any shin pads. I didn't care about opponents trying to kick me. For me, it was showing how brave I was. He was tough. He kept putting himself in the firing line. He would take the notch, but he's not a small man himself. He's like he's all there, solid unit. Physically tough, perhaps. But Viali's mental resolve was equally put to the test. Having now graduated as a leading light in the Italian national team, he soon learnt the fragile, pressurised relationship with the Italian press at the European Championships in 1988. Very good memories. But then I remember we played the semi-final to Russia and I had a one goal opportunity and I missed it with a header. Viali is there and he's placed it wide. I flew back to Italy and I remember the headlines, you are a traitor, you betrayed your country. So just to show how fickle the game can be and how the press can turn something that you thinking about cherishing for the rest of your life into something that you want to forget <laughs> straight away because somehow they made you think that you have betrayed your country. An underpar Sampdoria had lost the 1989 Cup Winners' Cup final to Barcelona. But a Viali double in the same final a year later against Anderlecht saw his stock rise further, with Italia 90 just a month away. There was pressure on my shoulders. I was supposed to be one of the stars of the tournament, which is something that I didn't mind. And there is Gianluca Viali, rated at £10 million, the Sampdoria striker who has the villa overlooking the sea at Genoa. During the World Cup, after two matches in which I didn't score a goal, but I missed a penalty. Oh, he's hit the post! Gianluca Viali fails from the penalty spot. I created two assists. And then I got injured, I put my hamstring and I couldn't be of any use for the three successful matches, which Italy played really well and Baggio and Schilacci became a very creative and effective partnership. So in the script there's always someone that's supposed to be the star that needs to fall. And I was the falling guy. I made a comeback in the side in the semi-final and we lost to Argentina on penalties. And of course, because I made a comeback in the side, I was guilty of being the guy that shouldn't have been in the side. I was like consider or well, the main reason why we didn't win the World Cup. But it's all part of the <laughs> part of the game. The collective disappointment of Italia 90 did have a silver lining, however. The galvanizing effect it had upon all the Sampdoria players involved. 
we had a point to prove. Vujadin Bosco was absolutely crucial because he gave us the right mentality in order to be able to express our very best. Our main goal was to actually end up winning the Italian championship. But we were also thinking about doing well in Europe. We realized that our adventure could culminate in a league win if we continue to give our all and spend time together, both inside and outside the dressing room. Probably the most important match of the season was at Milano San Siro versus Inter Milan with four matches to go and they were just a few points behind us. If you win it, you're basically, you know, right there to win the championship. You lose it, then your rival will win it. It really was a very tense, nervy match, because both teams knew what we were playing for. And then there were certain things not giving the way it should be have given by a referee. I remember the Klinsmann controversy, but mainly I remember the penalty miss by Mateus. Klinsmann's goal was ruled out. We scored two great goals from Pepe Dosena and Viali. We ended up winning 2 0. That was the time when we actually realized that we had, we had done it, we had won it. We played the last match at home to Lecce. By then, we were absolutely impossible to stop, and within 30 minutes, we were winning 3 0. And we won it in front of our fans, which was fantastic. I was wandering around in my underpants after the match, not because I had anything to boast about. <laughs> On the contrary, it's because uh, some of the fans managed to invade the pitch and uh, they were taking anything that they could possibly uh, <laughs> take and keep. Obviously, my shorts and my, and my shirt, they all went pretty soon. Luca was just so complete, you know, and so smart in everything he did. Him and, and Roberto Mancini built that partnership at Sampdoria was very special. Sampdoria and Viali continue to make waves after what remains the club's only Scudetto to date. The 91-92 season took the club almost beyond their wildest dreams. We got to the final in the European Cup at Wembley versus Barcelona. Wembley! Wembley! Winning it would have been the icing on the cake. It was quite a difficult match to prepare from, from my point of view because there was a sort of mod than just a rumor that uh, I was um, going to be sold to Juventus. But that wasn't the first time that that rumor had been around. I had been sold to AC Milan twice, Inter Milan once, Naples. So I was quite used to playing, <laughs> thinking that it could be my final match for the, for the club. I remember missing a goal opportunity for a very close range from across from Attilio Lombardo. And somehow I couldn't coordinate myself to attack. The match was decided by a goal in extra time by Ronald Coman. We went very, very close to winning the match. It was destiny for us not to win it. But I thought about those opportunities for about four years after the match. I had nightmares sometimes waking up thinking that the match still had to be played and then realizing that it was just in the past. The final would indeed be Viali's last game for Sampdoria. The persistent rumors of his departure finally became a reality in the summer of 92. Age 28, for me, it was probably the right time to make him move to a bigger club and start a game. Giants Juventus paid 12.5 million pounds for his services. At the time, a world record fee. I never thought about the price tag. I just wanted to do well because to wear the Juventus shirt is a massive responsibility. You put it on and you immediately feel the, the weight of the shirt. At that time, we had uh, many very good players like uh, Roberto Baggio, Paolo Di Canio, Ravanelli, uh, Müller, the German midfielder. So Trapattoni did struggle to create the right balance. Gianluca non riusciva a giocare come magari. Gianluca didn't manage to play the way he would have liked. He was criticised a lot by the press for his performances, which was something he found hard to accept. He wasn't feeling at ease. 
and he was struggling. Despite Viali's struggles, Trapattoni's Juve romped to victory over Borussia Dortmund in the 93 UEFA Cup final. After winning the UEFA Cup in the first season, I broke my foot twice and I made a comeback just before the end of the season and um, I nearly made the uh, national team squad for the World Cup in 1994 before falling out with the manager, Arrigo Sacchi. I played for the national team in Malta. I scored and then going from being the captain to not being selected, it was quite um, a shock for me. When you're the captain, you deserve a phone call. So I got really annoyed by that. Arrigo Sacchi actually wanted to call me back in the national side. Probably stupidly, I said, no, thank you, but no thank you. I, I just don't feel like I want to play for you because uh, uh, we just don't get on. And that was a mistake, definitely a mistake, because you should always put aside your ego. You are given an opportunity to play for the national team. should be more important than anything else. So Malta became my last game for the national team. I regret that very much. After 16 goals and 59 caps, Viali's decision ended his international career. However, his new coach at club level was about to turn the unsettled striker's fortunes around. I wanted to go back to Sampdoria because I felt like, you know, I'm not happy here. But then with the new manager, Marcello Lippi, he said to me, look, Luca, this is my first big opportunity. I do need you here. As a player, when you hear these kind of words, you just feel like you can walk on water. He had a chat with Marcello Lippi, who immediately made him feel like an important figure, both on and off the field. I still remember one day after a poor performance against Brescia, the team had a briefing in the gym with the coach, and that's when the idea of playing with three strikers came about, because Juventus had become too predictable. So from that day on, Juventus started playing with three strikers, myself, Viali and Baggio. We were extremely happy to become the first defenders when the opponents had the ball. The ball and midfielder, the way they work, he gave me the, the, the possibility to make bad decisions. It created a different mentality in the team that made everyone feel important. And I feel Marcello Lippi deserves great credit for that. We ended up scoring lots of goals and I was the top scorer. We won the championship in the first season, the Italian Cup, the Italian Super Cup. So it worked out very well for me. A 94-95 quadruple for Juventus was only denied by Parma in the UEFA Cup final despite one of Viali's most memorable strikes. I was actually aiming to the uh, far uh, top corner and somehow the ball <laughs> went to the <laughs> near top corner. I wouldn't say it was a shank. Shank is too much. It was a fade. <laughs> La giornata di vigilia della partita Juventus Real Madrid. It would be the 95-96 Champions League that presented Viali with the chance to bury the ghosts of Wembley from four years earlier. In the Champions League, it was a fantastic season for Juventus. We had to face Real Madrid in the quarter-final, and it was tough, extremely tough. It was a very close call, but eventually we we managed to go through, and then we had Nantes in the semi-final. From the beginning, uh, Nancy, he pushed us, and only quality players like uh, Gianluca help us with his goal. And with his uh, assist. We knew we had to face Ajax. They were the holders. It was, without a doubt, the most difficult match to prepare from a psychological point of view. I knew that Juventus had made the decision to move on and not to renew my contract. So I thought, oh my God, here we go again. Like, you know, four years before with Sandor is gonna be my final match. I will not have another opportunity to play in the final like this. What's gonna happen if I lose? I was asking myself this question. Will I be able to cope or will I commit suicide? I remember he told me in the training camp 
how much that defeat with Sampdoria still hurt him and how he wanted to win the Champions League at all costs. Eventually, it worked out to, to be a fantastic game. We won it on penalties, but I think we were the better side. I felt extremely proud, but I remember thinking quickly also about the Sampdoria fans and dedicated part of that achievement to, to them. I think I, I owe it to them because of what, you know, the opportunities I missed in the, in the, in the final at Wembley versus Barcelona. It was like lifting a huge weight um, off your shoulders. Everybody knew that it would be Gianluca's last match. I think that for him, it was a relief. When my contract uh, at Juventus ran out, I didn't want to play for another Italian side. Um, I actually had been uh, always a, a keen fan of uh, the Premiership and, and English football. He already planned because he started to learn English, so that he, he anticipated uh, his, his move. When Ruth Hullet called me and asked me to join Chelsea, I was obviously over the moon. I want to become a Chelsea legend. So I want to score a lot for Chelsea. I will try. I was kind of a pioneer, one of the very first Italians to come to the Premiership. I fell in love with the English game uh, straight away. To partner up with, uh, with Luca was good. The necessary attacking the space behind the defenders to create space, especially for a player like myself who liked to, to get in between the lines, or sometimes he could play as a target. What uh, I appreciated in Luca was the capacity to, to understand the game. He started partnering with Mark Hughes. And uh, then Luca got injured. He was out for two games. And that was the moment when Rude uh, played me up front with Mark. And from that moment, the team started to keep winning, winning. And in the end of the day, Luca ended up uh, not playing uh, the main part. But he always played a big part with us because his influence in the changing room and on the pitch when he came on, on the bench, it was always a good influence. It wasn't easy for him to accept to be on the bench. His reaction was to get uh, his head down and work hard, never giving up on anything. His second of the game, and he's back with a vengeance. Following Hullet's sacking in 98, Viali succeeded the Dutchman as player-manager at Stamford Bridge. For two and a half years, we were extremely successful. We won five trophies, we won domestically, and we won in Europe with the Cup Winner Cup and the European Super Cup versus Real Madrid, which had just won the Champions League. Fifteen years after his professional debut for Cremonese, the Italian played his last game in 1999 to call time on a career with few regrets. I consider myself one of the luckiest strikers in the history of the game because as number 10, I play with the likes of uh, Roberto Mancini, Gianfranco Zola at Chelsea, Roberto Baggio and Alessandro Del Piero at Juventus, so it could have been worse. Where he goes, the team will win something. He was the benchmark for me. I always hoped that one day I could be like Gianluca Vialli. So when I got to play alongside him, it was like a dream come true. A veteran of no fewer than nine European finals, Vialis has been a story of learning how to lose to know how to win. My mentality, being Italian, we are only satisfied when we win. I mean, the silver medal, we say, is, you know, you are the best of the losers. I tend to forget the finals where we didn't win. I think I've put him up there with all the best ones I've played with. He had a fabulous career. He should be proud of himself. I'm quite proud of my career. It couldn't have been better, it couldn't have been worse, but uh, I did my best.